Hi, I'm Uncle Ted, the Ice Cream Alchemist with Ice Cream Every Day, and this is non-dairy dark chocolate ice cream. And this is actually experiment number 20. It took me 20 attempts to get something that was this good, that was scoopable, had the right amount of sweetness, but had no dairy and no processed sugar. I worked hard on this for a long time, and I finally have it, and I'm really happy. You know, I've got friends of mine who can't have dairy. Some of them, they can't have processed sugar. People I care about deeply and who will always be important to me. And they couldn't have my ice cream. So I went to work. It took a lot of experimentation. It took a lot of effort. But I think I finally got it. And there's something else I wanted to say here. I kept going on the thought of let's make non-dairy ice cream. Instead of thinking of it in terms of a frozen confection that didn't have dairy in it. Once I started thinking in those terms, it really opened up a lot of possibilities and it really opened up a lot of different ideas for me. And I could get a bit more creative and get out of that confining box and think more in terms of let's do something frozen that's good. There's something about this that I really enjoyed. Number one, I didn't have to churn it. Really? Once it cooled in the refrigerator, it made a wonderful pudding. But even if I did freeze it, it didn't freeze into a block of ice, it became still scoopable. And that's important. You don't find a lot of non-dairy confections out there that are still scoopable. Usually what happens is they're kind of hard as a rock and you gotta chip at them a little bit and it's really not that great. This, this stuff here is scoopable. I'm really happy about how this turned out. It is non-dairy, there's no processed sugar, and it's scoopable. And yeah, it looks a little dark from all the dark cocoa I put into it, but I gotta tell you, it tastes amazing. This is probably one of the tastier concoctions I've come up with, just because you can taste the coconut, you can taste the dates, you can taste the cocoa, but it doesn't taste chemically. Yeah, it doesn't have that non-food taste to it. It actually tastes like real food. And that's important, especially when you're trying to avoid dairy and processed sugar. So this has a wonderful sweetness to it without being super sweet. And the dates really add this wonderful base to it. So you don't feel like it's missing something. And that's important. You're not missing out on anything. You so hope you really enjoyed the video. And to the friends of mine who aren't able to have dairy or processed sugar, understand that I've always been thinking of you and I've been working to try and get something for you that you could actually enjoy. Thanks. So this is a quick shot of the ingredients. Obviously I left out the dark cocoa powder. My bad. But one thing I wanted to point out is make sure that you're using canned coconut milk and canned coconut cream. Don't buy the stuff in boxes because that's already been pre-sweetened and you really don't want it because it doesn't taste like coconut. It's just a pain in the neck. So use the stuff that comes in a can. It'll taste much better and you'll get much better results. Next we're going to go ahead and cut up our dates. I always assume that the dates are going to have pits in them just because the automated process usually ends up missing something. So I'm going to do this anyway whether or not they're pitted or un unpitted. So doing it this way I, I can have better control and make sure no one loses any teeth. Plus, you know, this is uh, my way of making sure that things are in a more manageable shape. These dates were wonderful to work with. They had so much natural sweetness. There was actually some crystalline sugar on the outside of them and they were very easy to pit. All I had to do was make a little slit in the top, get the pit out, and then I was ready to move on to the next one. They were very sticky and just wonderful dates. I got them on sale and it was a great buy. Next we chop them up into thirds and we put them in with our one can of coconut milk. Keep in mind that coconut milk is going to have some solids in it until it heats up to about 76 degrees. No problem, we want those solids that is just coconut fat and it is just a wonderful thing. It really adds some great flavor. So we need to heat that up and then we go ahead and just put in our chopped dates in there. Once all the dates are chopped up and the solids have heated up in the coconut milk, just go ahead and add the dates in there, stir it around a little bit, and then put the lid on. We're going to cook it for about 20 minutes on some low heat. Now, remember, when you take the lid off to check on it, 
Don't let that condensation go from the lid back into your pot. We're cooking that out on purpose. So take a paper towel, wipe off that lid, and you'll actually remove a lot of moisture. And that's just less moisture you have to deal with and less ice in the end. After 20 minutes at low heat, what we have is a very rich blend here. Now, the dates should be soft, so what we're going to do is we're going to put them in a food processor. Now be careful, this is hot, so you don't want to splatter yourself. But what we want to do is get it in our food processor and give it a good chopping. We want to make sure that we almost have a puree with the coconut milk and the dates that we've chopped up. And this will make things, uh, make a very nice base for us to work with. Now make sure that you're being real careful with this hot mixture that you don't uh, splatter any on yourself and burn yourself because like I said it's pretty thick and it's hot so you don't want to get hurt. Now once we've got that pureed we're going to go ahead and put that back in our pot on low to, low to medium heat and then we're going to add one can of our coconut cream. Now that coconut cream is going to be in the solid form unless it's incredibly hot in your kitchen. And so we're going to scoop that out, put that in with your pot, and give it a good stirring. As it heats up, then the solids will begin to turn to liquid form and be much more easily mixed in with our batch. Once the solids have been turned to liquid, then I'm going to go ahead and remove about a quarter of a cup of our mixture. I'm going to put it in a container, and I'm going to set it aside to let it cool off. I'm going to add, when that's that cools off, two teaspoons of cornstarch and then I'm going to mix that in and make a slurry and I'm going to set that aside I'm going to add that later on but f make sure that you let your uh, mixture cool off enough so that when you add the cornstarch it doesn't instantly start to seize up on you so you know give it about five minutes once you remove it from the pot to cool off enough to work with Next we're going to add our three quarters of a cup of honey and one quarter cup of sorghum. Make sure you use the non-sulfated sorghum, that's very important. Then we're going to sift in our one cup of dark cocoa powder along with one teaspoon of our xanthan gum and one eighth of a teaspoon of our gourd gum. We're just going to sift it all in together. Once it's sifted in, then we're going to whisk it into our mix and give that a good stir. Once we have that in, that's when we're going to go back and add our slurry that we made with the cornstarch and the quarter of a cup of batch that we set aside, and we're going to whisk that in as well. Once everything's incorporated, you're done. Take it off the heat, put it in a container, put it in the refrigerator for eight hours. When it's, it cools down, it makes a wonderful pudding. If you want to put it in your ice cream maker according to your manufacturer's instructions, it's going to be a little thick, but when it comes out, it's every bit as wonderful. And I have to say, this has some of the best flavors that I have ever come up with. And I really think you should give this one a try. It is just magnificent. Understand that I'm going to keep working in the kitchen. I'm going to keep doing the alchemy. And I'm going to keep coming up with solutions. Because there's other flavors that I want to work on. And there's other things I want you to try. So, if you are one of those people who I care about deeply. And you can't have dairy or you can't have that processed sugar. This... It's just the beginning. This is just the beginning. I have other things in store, and I'm going to keep working on them for you. You're important to me. You always will be. And I'm not going to stop. At the end of the day, if you're not making things for the people you care about, then why make it? If you're not eating ice cream for breakfast, why bother being an adult? And as I always end my videos, may the love in our hearts forever be reflected in the bowl we hold in our hands. Thank you for watching.